Hey there, Mission Control. Well, today we're going to continue our system challenges series, and uh, as promised in the last video, we're going to break up uh, some of the challenges we have with the digester. Uh, last time we talked about how to feed it. Today we're going to talk about how to heat it. Well, if you're brand new to the channel, you probably don't know why there's a giant wood post coming up out of the ground here with all these hoses on it. Um, but if you've been with us for a while, you know that's because this is where the heater uh, for the digester and the radiant floor system that goes underneath all the fish tanks is actually meant to be connected. So all these pipes right here, whoa, weird thing there. That scared me. <laughs> uh, that scared me. That sounded like there was a rattlesnake in here. I hate snakes. Anyway, um, this red pipe here is the hot out and then you have blue coming back in, uh, cold in. So this is your water going out to the system, your water returning from the system. And inside of the digester, there's actually coils uh, of PEX tubing that are uh, mounted along the walls. And that's to help heat up the digester and get it up to temperature. Now, lately I've noticed on my uh, pressure gauge here that I have no pressure in this system. And that concerns me greatly uh, because I should have pressure in the system, but for some reason, I don't. Um, so, you probably, my guess is, that the temperature down there is, is too cool to actually support um, robust uh, breakdown, of the, give them the thanogens, the, the bacteria, what they need in order to really uh, kind of do their job. So I had a temperature probe that actually went all the way down into the digester's stomach. I made that last year and it worked for quite some time. Uh, just a standard temperature uh, th probe and when they, so you have the probe and then you got like that much cable on it and then I had a Connect Cat 5 cable to that uh, and splice it. And when I splice it, I did a bunch of heat shrinking and everything, trying to make it as watertight as possible. And I totally failed. <laughs> um, it lasted for quite a few months, but eventually water did penetrate and I put a ohm meter on a resistor that was right next to where that thing comes in and sure enough, uh, burned it out. So I got that up at the house and I need to fix that here this week so I can get the temperature probe back down in there and see really what's going on. Now, I think it's a lot warmer that, than outside for sure because we put this digester in the building on purpose uh, to help take advantage of all the warm air that we have in here uh, with the heater, right? This is a warm area, whereas if we put it outside, that'd just be cold uh, and the digester won't work when it's cold. So I got that temperature probe up at the house. I got the Arduino up at the house. We're gonna redo the cabling on that and come up with a waterproof way to do it. Uh, I think some conformal coating maybe on the connection is what I needed to do. Uh, so we'll, we'll figure that all out. Uh, once we get that probe back in there, we can, we can see what the temperature is and see if that bacteria has an environment that's conducive to it creating methane. In the meantime, uh, we need to talk about really getting aggressive with heating it because passive heating like what we've had here just isn't good enough. We, we really want to get it at well above 70 degrees, really prefer to have it be 100 degrees Fahrenheit inside of that uh, digester. Now, if you had a 100 degree Fahrenheit mass right here, you're going to get some radiant heat in this building, which is another reason why we wanted this in here is if we do heat this thing all the way up, that's a 12 foot diameter, that's four meter diameter uh, stomach that's 12 feet down in the ground. That's a lot of thermal mass. If you can heat that thing up to 100 degrees, you're heating it up to 100 degrees, you're heating all that water and manure in there up to 100 degrees and uh, Fahrenheit, and you're heating the ground around it up to 100 degrees Fahrenheit, at least right next to it, and then of course you have a temperature gradient. If we can get this thing heated, we're gonna be able to produce a lot more methane. So one of the things that I really wanna do is change my heating plan. Originally, we're gonna use a natural gas, methane-powered, hot water heater to kind of power itself. As long as the material that we put in there is rich in nutrients that the methanogens need, uh, you could generate enough methane to kind of heat itself and still have some left over. It's all about the food stock because that's where the energy equation comes to. So you, gotta, you have to calculate the actual chemistry of each of the substances you're putting in there to really figure out your energy balance equation and I kind of stopped at that point. 
and said, well, let's build one and, and experiment with the different food stocks that we have because people are using them and you know, I just need to figure out how to use it. I digress. I don't like the idea of using the natural gas for this anymore because I'd rather use that natural gas, the methane, to run the heater for the building or to pump up to the house, which that's what this pipe is for. It will pump up to the barn end of the house where I can actually use the stuff up there for our hot water heater, our floors, um, and a cooktop. And eventually I could even convert my truck and use, um, uh, um, they actually sell a natural gas compressor that you can use to compress all this stuff. You gotta scrub it, you gotta clean it, and then you can compress it. And I actually run my truck and drive back and forth to work every day just by the natural gas that's coming off this tank. I can't go much further than that, but I can do back and forth to work, which is about 30, mile, 30 miles total. Uh, so we could do that. that that's, that's very doable. That's actually more like 45 miles. Um, so how can we heat it without using that gas? Subscriber idea, not mine, but it's a good idea, is to mount and articulating or somewhat kind of probably right at this angle right here, um, vacuum solar tubes and then connect, connect our pipes up to it, put the pump that used to be here back in line with it and just run your water through it. Um, these are all filled with water. You can even fill them with glycol if you wanted to uh, and use the power of the sun to hit those uh, vacuum solar tubes and heat this thing up. Now in the summer, that's really gonna work. Like, we could probably almost boil that thing with the amount of radiant energy coming in. In the winter time, that's more of a question. But the reason that the solar tubes were suggested to me is because even in the winter, they do work. So I think any energy is better than no energy and free energy is the best energy of all. So I'm thinking, that I design a little array of solar tubes here that are mounted and maybe even articulating a little bit or maybe that's a future spiral on those things, but at least get, so like right here, sun's kind of hit me right in the face here. If I could get it just this angle, mounted to this thing, connected in, we'd be able to start pumping heat down in the digester and really see uh, how much uh, energy we can get off this thing for a real test. So that's what I'm thinking, and, and if we can get this thing heated, that's a game changer. So we, we gotta deal with the loading problem first, but this heating thing, um, I'm really curious, and the solar vacuum tubes seem to be very affordable. Uh, I think we could probably get an array put together and uh, mount it up here and get this thing going. Well, so there you have it. That's pretty much the challenges associated with heating the digester. I think that su uh, subscriber suggestion of the solar tubes is a great way to go. If anything, uh, you know, it may not be enough heat to really get it going, but it's free heat from the sun. Well, there's nothing free, but anyway, you know, it's, I'm not paying to burn something or to use electricity other than to pump it in there. So I think, it, I think it's definitely worth trying. So I'm gonna put some more brain power on that one. Curious to know what your thoughts are on all these challenges that we have. So be sure to leave some comments down below. If you like this video, be sure to give us a thumbs up and hit subscribe. And don't forget, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and on Patreon. In the meantime, everyone, this is The Real Martian, out.